My name is Ed Piskor. I'm Jim Rugg. And we have David Cho in the house today debriefing the Frank Miller panel discussion that he did mm -hmm. as of this recording two weekends ago at Los Angeles Comic Con. Uh, do we need preambles? Do we need uh, some some context for, for Dave? You want to drop that real fast? Um, I always go to slow jams. That's how he got on my radar uh, in the <laughs> early days, maybe... I guess you're doing graffiti art at the time, but you were doing comics and, and part of like uh, Jordan Crane's non-anthology. You were in an SPX anthology, uh, Bruised Fruit, moving into, say, Juxtapose magazine in that direction. But uh, we were lucky in the comic book shops in the direct market to get some David show in the in the 90s and in the 2000s. So that was my entry point. And then... I don't know. Does the world need an introduction for David Cho? Listen to our other shoot interview, man. We're trying to we're trying to usurp the Gerard Way one with this conversation right now that we have more subscribers. David Cho, thanks for joining us today, man. I fucking love you guys, dude. I love you guys so much. <laughs> like, I wish every interview started like that. With slow <laughs> and then um, I'm gonna start the interview. Well, I already messed up because I was trying uh, just for a personal thing, trying to do an interview without cursing, and I started already. So I just. <laughs> That's what happens when I get excited, but um, I'll start the uh, interview off with some pettiness, which is I did your guys, this is like Groundhog Day for me. Like I sat in this exact room facing the other direction. Um, was it a year ago or something like that? And I think there was riots happening outside. I was pretty sure. And like now it's like miserable in LA right now. It's raining. And I think you guys are kind of wearing the same clothes as you were. <laughs> I'm probably wearing the same sweatpants. Um, and uh, I did the interview and then afterwards, um, you know, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to be received by the comic book community. Like, I know I know how much I love comics and stuff, but I don't know how much, you know, every time I do anything comics related, it's kind of polarizing. And <clears throat> so I see my shoot interview go up on Kayfabe and I'm like, top interview, Gerard Way, then Todd McFarlane, then like Jim Lee or something, and, you know, and, I, <clears throat> and then I go up there and... Uh, you know, I'll just throw it out. Like at least once a week, I check to see if I beat Gerard Way. I'm still like kayfabe, guys. I'm 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 being open and vulnerable with my pettiness. Please make sure that my interview is listened to more than Gerard Way. I don't know the guy. He's probably a very sweet guy, and he and and this actually will come back to her, to Gerard Way. But um, I, I don't know that guy. Fuck that guy. You know, like. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do, man. Uh, in the description directly below this video is going to be a link to the to the original David Cho shoot interview. Click I don't give shoot. a shit how fucking petty it makes me sound. Like, when I beat Todd McFarlane, I was so happy. I was like, <laughs> dude, I got more hits than Todd McFarlane. This is like... This is a big day for me, man. I went out and I had a pizza, man. It was awesome. Yeah, you're, you listen, you're, you're not the only guy. I remember Tim Truman uh, on, on the uh, shoot interview. He wanted to get more than Steve Bissett. <laughs> It's, it's whatever is your process, man. Whatever gets you to, to, to get, get your day started and stuff, man. And yeah, Gerard Way is going to come back up in a conversation. But man, you had a pretty intense comic book week. And I felt I felt like I was uh, vicariously living through it, man, because we were pretty active uh, in text message. And you were sending yeah. some fly photos. Uh, so, yeah, you know, day starts off or whatever. You, you're you're um, with Brian K. Vaughn going to Dave Mandel's crib we're gonna have him on the show at some point like super popular uh tv writer shit like saturday night live seinfeld uh curb your enthusiasm children are on veep yeah uh, and what does he do with all all of that hollywood loot man get some original comic book art so what was that like visiting <clears> his <throat> spot um you guys want the short version or the long version <laughs> listen we're having fun man <laughs> uh, all right so I don't know if this is racist, but I, actually it is racist. It's like the like that subtle kind of race racism where anytime someone I don't know or I've just met through Zoom or whatever, when they when they come to town, they're like, oh, Dave, um, can you tell us where the good Korean spot is? And the thing is, I do know where it is. I know where the best ones is. I have all the, you know, inside, you know, scoop to get good table and all that shit. But it's like, do I automatically ask an Italian guy where the best Italian restaurant is or, you know, anyways. So, and, and the bad part of that is I end up eating Korean food, like, like three, you know, this is like a Thanksgiving dinner type meal, right? Like this is the kind of shit I never grew up when I was eating. It's like a full feast, like all this panchan barbecued meats. It's like that I would get once in a while. 
So during the pandemic, um, I think I, I might've said this in my last interview, I shot my shot, man. Like, I'm like, if, you know, I had a, um, I had an editor, Will Dennis, for almost, almost 20 years asked me to do comics. And every year I'm like, this is the year, this is the year. And as everything shut down and all, all the traveling, everything, I was like, if I don't do a comic book this, at this point in my life, I'll never do it because this, it doesn't get more like distractionless as this, you know? So I sat down and then <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm not going to do it, <laughs> but I write and I write a lot and I have tons of writing and all of it, you know, every single thing that I've written will get me canceled. And, and, and so I have all these comic books that I want to make and through, um, uh, Eddie Choi and, uh, this guy, Felix, the art dealer and all, all these other friends I have in comics. I, I shot my shot during the pandemic. I hit up Frank quietly. I hit up Raphael grandpa, um, Daniel Warren Johnson, Simon, Simon Hanselman, Dustin Wynn, and just all my heroes, like all these guys that are currently working. And I'm like, are you guys down to like draw something for me if I write it? knowing that I've never written anything in comics before besides slow jams. And uh, everyone's like, oh yeah, man, we love you, Dave. And you know, like maybe we could, you know, these guys are all, you know, at the top of their game. So they're all busy and <clears throat> they're like, yeah, maybe like in 2025, 20, 2030, 20, you know, something like that. So I'm like, man, maybe I should uh, lower my expectations. But you know, what happened through, through, um, through these connections is even if I never, even if I never do a comic book of Frank quietly, like it's been amazing just like connecting with him as a human and just talking about what it's like to be an artist and the shit that he goes through and the stuff I go through. And one of these guys is uh, Daniel Warren Johnson. You know, he had a killer year with Wonder Woman and Beta Ray Bill. And, you know, so we just text each other nerd stuff. He's in the music, I'm in the music. And, and, and you know, most times whenever we don't talk that much, but when we do, it's not about comic books, you know, it's about, real life stuff and so he was coming to town to do a signing uh with uh felix the art dealer and they go hey uh let's take him to a korean restaurant i'm like it's kind of racist but all right i know the spot so we're i i set up on my calendar i'm gonna have dinner with daniel warren johnson and and uh you know i'm pumped man like i don't know what this new genre of comics uh that that he's been working on ever since extremity and and even with i cry reading almost every single one of his comics he he just knows how to draw faces or something that tugs at the heartstrings and and i'm just like you know sometimes i'm just reading in my car or on my couch <laughs> I just start, I just, i'm like it's, it's a new experience for me i'm not used to crying like reading a comic book but he just like knows how to do it and and then uh felix goes hey mind if i invite some other people i'm like sure so I'm eating, I'm eating dinner with these guys. Daniel, I think has never had Korean food. So I'm like teaching him how to like wrap it in like lettuce and all the things. And one of the other guys that's like, oh, my, my, might as well uh, that I'm invited is uh, Brian K. Vaughn. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know, and I'm pretty good at like playing it cool. You know, I live in fucking LA. I've been around Hollywood my whole life. I'm around big celebrities all the time. And it's like, who cares, whatever. And I'm just like, this, this guy fucking wrote Saga. He wrote Ex Machina. Like, he wrote all this shit. And I'm just sitting and he's just like this regular guy, you know? And, and I'm like, I'm like, fuck, dude, this guy could be like, he probably is like the Frank Miller to a lot of kids coming up right now, you know? And so it's, you know, the conversation was not recorded. There was a part of me that was like, kind of, I didn't do it, but I was like, you guys mind if I hit record on my phone just because, just for me? Just because I want to remember this, you know, we were we were going hard, like just going hard into the nerd shit. And then halfway through dinner, um, Felix is like, yeah, there's another guy that's going to join us. He's he's going to he's going to roll through. And it's Dave Mandel. And he comes in. I'm like, holy fuck. It's the guy that wrote the Bizarro episode of Seinfeld. I know all about this guy. And mostly not just from like Veep and Seinfeld and Curb and all that stuff, but this world I mean, it's changed, but this world of collecting like the high ticket like items, like Dark Knight cover number one, you know, the cover of Killing Joke, like all the iconic covers is like five guys. 
And if someone ever made a documentary about it, I would watch the shit out of it because these guys are complete cartoon characters in the best way. Like, I'm not saying that in a bad way. Like, Dave Mandel is absolutely ridiculous. This is, is uh, not to sidetrack, but this is like yeah. Seth's Wimbledon Green graphic novel because it's a bunch, it's about a cast of characters that are comic book collectors. And it right. is this, what you're describing. It's a small group of them. They all know each other. And they're all those cartoon characters because they're so eccentric in you know what they're doing. And it's such a small world in a lot of ways. It's what makes these artist editions like kind of easy because that Scott Dunbeer guy is like connected with those dudes, man. And it really is. It's a, it's a bunch of big, big, those, really those rich art, dudes. Those artist editions is like five guys. Yeah. Like it's, it's like they have, you know, and, 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 you know, through the pandemic, you know, I was home a lot and I got to meet, like, I got to meet some of these guys and like, they have their own like issues with each other. There's rivalries and I, I could do a whole hour on it. And I don't know how much of these guys would want to talk about that, but man, so there's two guys. I, I don't, I won't say the other guy's name. Cause I don't know if he wants me to talk about him, but like that have like the, all the key art from dark Knight returns, you know, and it, it is like. It, I, it just it brings me so much joy that I'm meeting like bizarro versions of myself, right? Because you have you have the 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 lottery conversation with your buddy, right? Hey, if I won the lottery, what would I do? I'd buy Dark Knight number one. I buy I'd buy the actual Batmobile, and it's like <laughs> it's like a little kid conversation, right? Well, I kind of did win the lottery in my life, and I can buy all that stuff, and I just. I don't know, maybe I matured or maybe I grew up or maybe I got sad. I don't know, whatever the reason is, but I could just buy the artist edition. I don't need to have the, there's something very weird about having something so iconic and so precious and rare in your house. Not just because I'm paranoid someone's going to come steal it. It's like, I feel like, I feel like it should be in a museum or, you know, it's just, and, and then the, on the flip side now, I know the guys that have it. So I'm like, I'd rather just go see it at your house and not have the responsibility of like owning it or whatever. So I got to see the cover of Dark Knight Returns, number one, at the same Korean barbecue place uh, about a year ago. And, you know, I know it's just a simple silhouette with like an airbrushed lightning bolt, but it was like, I almost cried when I saw it because it just, it, it was so emotional to like, you know, it, it it means it means so much to me you know and then uh and so dave mandel's there and you know we're it's I, like you you know you guys did a nice intro for me but i i you guys have been saving my life this pandemic you know like and and even now that things have calmed down and i'm going out and stuff like the neil gaiman todd mcfarlane like like that the court stuff is like the best media content that I've ever heard. like I'm 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 just sitting there driving drawing and yes you guys could do the accents and stuff better but I'm just dying just you know in my in my position I could have sued a few people in my life and I never did and it's just I imagine that's what it would play out like trying to explain to a judge the the nuances of graffiti art or comic book art or you know whatever and you know, you guys, you guys are taking this, you guys are having these conversations that, that like, that are like fulfilling my soul. Like the, the, just going through a, a wizard magazine for an hour and a half. I'm like, yes. So that's the level of conversation that's happening at this dinner while eating like kimchi and Korean food. And I'm like, and, I, and I'm just like, I, you know, I'm like in disbelief because we're going back and forth between like, Brian K. Vaughn's new projects and his dream projects. And hey, would you ever want to work with me? And this and that. And Daniel, what's up with you? And then, oh, tell us the story of how you acquired like the the, you know, the Daredevil Electra, you know, cover. You know, it's so it's going through every part of comics, the collecting side, the guy who makes the shit, the guy who draws it, the guy who writes it. And I'm just sitting there like just like my head's exploding. Dinner ends around 1030, which is like late for me these days. I go to sleep pretty early. I wake up super early. Um, and uh, what I had heard is some dude had either fucked over, stolen, or or cheated Dave out of something at his house. So he doesn't bring people over there anymore. And uh, dinner ends and he's like, 
hey, I like you guys. You guys want to come over? <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, yes. Way past my, it was like almost midnight at some point. Real quick before we continue, Jimmy and I are cartoonists ourselves. Right now I have Red Room, the Antisocial Network, out on the stands. Uh, the trade paperback has about 70 pages of extra material that is not found in the issues. So if you have the issues, there's a lot of added value to grabbing the trade. If you missed out on an issue, you could grab the big book. Every story is self-contained, though. So if you see an issue on the stands, scoop it up. You're going to get a complete experience. And coming next year, 2022, which is rapidly approaching, uh, Red Room Trigger Warnings, uh, issue one is going to be coming out in February. This is the standard cover, the Eddie P variant, the Peach Momoko retail incentive variant, and the classic Jim Rugg by way of Robert Crumb Zap Comics Zero variant uh, coming out in February. It also will be a series of self-contained stories. So if you see an issue, just scoop it up. Hot off the presses, man, is uh, the announcement for Jim Rugg's Hulk Grand Design coming out in March, is it, Jim? March 2022. March 2022. Uh, two issues. Hulk Monster and what's the other one? Hulk Madness. Hulk Madness. Uh, 40 pages. Jim taking 10,000 pages of comics material from 40 years of incredible Hulk lore, condensing it down into an, a high octane comic book that is relentlessly energetic. You're going to want to get your hands on it. And there are variants that are promoted uh, with that also, man, a Peach Momoko variant. I had to do one. Uh, who's the other fella? Marcus Martin. Anything else you want to say about it real quick? No, that sums it up really well. Uh, it's the opposite of decompressed storytelling. It's a perfect jumping on point celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Hulk's creation. So mark it on your calendars, March 2022. Tell your local comic shop proprietor that you want copies of this. We have link trees in the description below this video where you can get to all our stuff. Now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. Yeah, maybe it was almost midnight because the conversation went long. And I'm like, holy fuck, dude. I, don't, I can't believe this is going to happen. I can't believe this shit's going to happen. So... <laughs> I drive uh, Daniel Warren Johnson. It's about 15 minutes from the restaurant. And the whole time we're just like, holy shit, is this, you know, what's about to happen right now? We know what's about to happen, but we don't know, you know? <clears throat> it feels like, um, it feels like the first time, like I got laid with like, like a supermodel, you know? Like, it's like, I knew it was going to happen, but like, I didn't know, you know, I didn't like, I had only been with like, not supermodels <laughs> up until that point. So it's like, I knew what she looked like in magazines. I knew, you know, I talked to her and all that, but I, I just, just like walking up to the house, ringing the doorbell, you know, so we get to this place. I By won't the say way, where Dave, it, most of us don't know what that's like. Just, just <laughs> FYI. It's unbelievable. It's just, it's just unbelievable. It's the equivalent is, you know, we're, we're a bit older guys, so our 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 uh, line into porn is is print. It's not digital, right? So, to 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 grow up like, and you have your favorite Playboy or penthouse, <laughs> and just be like, wow, like, you know, and yeah, it's airbrushed and whatever, but you're like, this is like, you know, as a young boy, this is my like idea of you know, what a woman looks like, and it might be distorted. It is distorted. And most women don't look like that. But it's like, it's like burned into your mind, you know, that's the first, you know, nut you got off and it's and it's there. And there's no part of a like a young, you know, prepubescent boy discovering his first heart on like, I'm gonna like, have sex with this woman one day, or I'm gonna meet her one day. And then, and then I get to that point, and it was gonna happen. And I'm just like, it's so much there's so much there because you're like there's so much history nostalgia she opens the door a little bit older doesn't look exactly like she did in the pictures but still like you know and you know everything about her because you read her little you know <laughs> pull out thing and 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 then it's like it's like a dream and then there's some like objectifying there because there is like actual literal human there, but there's like all the projections of what I want her to be and the fantasy and all that. And then uh, <clears throat> it, it was very similar. You know, I, I, I know this guy has one of the most massive art collections of the exact shit I'm into, you know, <laughs> like, so, so he opens the door and I'm a hoarder. And Dave, if you're listening, like no disrespect, 
like you 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 make my shit look like you know if i like if i just open this it's like i don't know it's it's just it's like floor to ceiling like the like the shit you guys have in the background right it's like that it's like but some of it is he, he i don't know how to explain it he collects exactly the same way i i do except like on another level because he'll have like million dollar like original art pieces and then on top of it a bootleg mexican darth vader and like <laughs> like a fake like we like a yellow spider-man from tijuana or some weird like discontinued like he, that's exactly the way i collect i collect all like um like weird toys that were boxed the wrong way and weird like fake transformers bootleg from china and and then like really nice stuff. And it's, it's none of it, it, all of it's handled in the same way, you know? So he'll, he'll be a stack of like really rare comic books and then, you know, bootleg Star Wars toys and, you know, weird mashup Boba Fett transformer, like Mexican wrestler toys, you know? And, and, you know, not to bury the lead, you just walk in and boom, like there it is like dark Knight. You know, just like like that, <laughs> and they're just sitting there, and you're like, "What the fuck? This is crazy! This is fucking crazy, man!" Like this guy, like like someone would have like uh like a some shit from like Aaron Brothers, just like it's just there, and it's next to like four key pieces of Dark Knight art, next to an original Bob Kane drawing, and uh, you know. Uh, and and I and I'm not by myself. I'm with Brian K. Vaughn and Daniel Warren Johnson, and they're like, uh, is it weird if I just call them BKV and DWJ? I, I should I should I'll be I'll be DYC. I have <laughs> I feel I feel like I, I feel left out. Uh, their mouths are on the floor, you know. Their mouths we're we're like we're like holy fuck. And then you know one of the one of the craziest like like a corner to a bathroom, you know, like just like every inch of the place is covered in action figures, Star Wars memorabilia, like all the stuff that impacted him as a child. And, you know, I don't know if I was, I was just asking him a million questions. I was probably the annoying guy. And in one corner he has, he has um, Bill Watterson, Calvin and Hobbes, uh, Charles Schultz, Snoopy, like original strips and then right next to it, like just a small Frank Frazetta painting and right next to that, <laughs> an original Norman Rockwell painting and under that, an original Alphonse Mucha. And I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> and so I'm, I'm just, and he has a ton of Frank Miller stuff. He has all the Daredevil Electra stuff. He has Dark Knight stuff. He has Watchmen covers. I know that's not Frank Miller, but he has that, he has that stuff. And I, I just I, I don't know what to do with myself in the same way I didn't know what to do with the with the play, Playboy model or, or the retired supermodel. You know, it's just like it, it's my, my head's exploding. Like I I'm, I might have like had some pre cum just just from standing there. It was there's the Mike Zek Punisher, the one you know. There's Brian Boland. There's early Art Adams. There's and, and you know. I was like, there's so few people that are going to like pre come with me, you know? So I'm like, definitely Ed, <laughs> you know, I don't have your number, Jim, but like I, I leave the place and I'm like, I haven't even walked out the door. And I asked, I asked Dave, I'm like, are you cool if I take pictures? He's like, yeah. And I know he knows you. And so I'm just sending it out to all my comic book buddies. And they're like, holy shit. Like my little brother, we still, you know, he lives in New York, but we collect comics and we, you know, I'm sending him everything. And he's like, what the fuck, bro? And it is like, what the fuck, bro? So it, it's, it's like, you know, and then he has the statue of Bizarro that was in this Bizarro episode of Seinfeld. And, and, I, and I'm like, I'm in a Bizarro world right now because I don't know how much money this guy's worth, but I'm like, I, I could probably buy most of the stuff. And I know you can't just buy it. A lot of this is like hunting. Um, you know, collectors are some of the weird, like people that collect shit, like, pokemon or like custom toys or or rare comic books that's their grail so money is not the currency for them a lot of times right 
Like I'll, I'll come in all cocky, like, bro, I want that thing that you have. And they're like, not for sale. And I'm like, don't give me that shit. Everything's for sale. And they're like, no, literally not for sale. Like I'll be dead, you know, lose my house and I'll be homeless on Skid Row still holding this. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that's what you say. But what if I slip you this number? And they're like, no, thanks. And I'm like, for real? And they're like, yeah, for real. So I'm sitting there having this like, wait, I could be like Dave. I could be like the other guy. I could be like all these guys. I could be one of those dudes that have like this sick collection. And I'm trying to be less of a hoarder in my life, you know? And I, I like, it's, it's going pretty good. Like I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff over the years. <clears throat> and, uh, and Dave's great. Like he, he was so like kind and warm and like answered all my nerd questions. And I'm like, you know, I guess I'm putting myself, I'm like, man, I could be friends with this guy. I could just, hopefully he'll let me come over more than once. Cause it's like a lot to, to take in, you know? And I just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't believe it was happening, you know, because you see, I, I, I read these books growing up. I never think I'm going to see an original, you know, Todd McFarlane from his prime, like Spider-Man, you know, I never think I'm going to see this stuff. And then you see it and you see the brush strokes and the whiteout and the imperfections. And like, you know, it's just, it, it's just, you know, this was, this was like what? almost less than a month ago and I'm still like kind of high off of it. Like it's, it's like, I'm in disbelief. And, uh, and in the same way, you know, after, you know, I leave the house after having sex with a beautiful, like 10, 10 out of 10, like I, I, I felt the same. Cause I, I was sitting, I was sitting in the car afterwards, like debrief with Daniel, like just, like, like just quiet, like, like what just happened, like in complete, I, I, I'm not even coherent right now. Cause I'm just, this is my first time saying it, this story out loud to like, I've only talked about it with like, what the fuck dude. And then like, and it, it's like, I took a ton of pictures. Right. And, and you know, I know comic books and all that is, is, is about the reproduction, right? It's not about the original. And I've seen, you know, before comic book, original art was worth so much money because a lot of these guys the the way the market's gone oh that's what i was going to say it used to be five guys but now with the crypto money and the tech bros and all the speculative guys and all the new millionaires they don't know who the top guys you know like a lot back in the day if heritage was having an auction and it was like cover of killing joke everyone would know who the top like five guys bidding on it is now there's like a hundred and nobody knows like who's bidding on what. And so back in the day, you could go to Comic-Con and Dave will tell you this. And if you went there in the nineties, even in the early two thousands with like 10 grand, you're leaving with like a stack of original art. Now, if you have 10 grand, you can maybe get one page, you know, of, of something that's decent, you know? So I'm in absolute disbelief. I can't believe I saw these like Holy grail pieces. It's, it's a definite, like, what the fuck moment i'm i'm high i'm high as i'm high as fuck i'm just i can't believe i touched it i can't believe i saw it i, I can't believe i met someone in this life that would let me you know i get a text saying hey do you want to moderate um frank miller's panel at la comic-con tomorrow <laughs> <I'm> like, <what? laughs> uh, this guy, Gerard Way, was supposed to interview him. He's the guy that sings, I'm not okay. And I guess something, I guess he wasn't okay and something happened and he couldn't do it. I'm like, I'm in, I'm in. Like, I don't, sorry. I didn't say I'm in that fast. I got the text. I'm still reeling in what just happened. And um, I think it was a Saturday, like Saturday was the, the Comic-Con and I'm just, Oh, one of the conversations, um, and I, and I, you know, I won't. I, I like to talk, but I'll never reveal what was said at dinner. It's just this con conversation topic of never meet your heroes, right? So we're all guys that have, you know, work in comics and whatever, and what it's like to meet your heroes and how that could be disappointing. And I just met 
Dave Mandel, he showed me his collection. It's just like, I was almost crying, like seeing the artwork. And then I'm thinking about my library and like how big of a section is dedicated to Sin City, Frank Miller, Dark Knight, you know, reprints. Like, I'm like, if I meet him and he's a dick, I'm gonna have to give all those books away. And then my childhood, you know, it's like, is it worth it? You know, like, I didn't think about it first. I was like, yeah. like my first instinct is to say yes. And then the second is, you know, I, I only know what I've read about him. I've never met him in, in person. And so like, what if I meet him and he's like a crotchety old man and he's like fucked up. And then I have to like, and then he ruins like everything that I thought, you know, it's like it, the fantasy, right? In the same way, I paused before having sex with the supermodel. It's like, I know what I've built up in my mind of what it's going to be like. And fortunately in, in that situation, it, it was pretty, she was awesome. She was, it was a great scenario, but she could have been a bitch. She could have been, and I've been in that situation where I've slept with multiple women and sometimes it doesn't turn out so well. And then it kind of ruins the fantasy. So I have a fantasy of Frank Miller of being my God. And I'm like, God's, but he's not a God. He's a human and humans can be disappointing. So I go pause. Should I do this? And, you know, um, you know, the, the group I was with was like, fuck, yeah, you should do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> when's this opportunity? I was like, all right, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But I had that a little bit of reluctant hesitation. And then uh, I think I texted Ed right away. I was like, bro, if you if, what would you ask? You know, so I send this text out to five guys that really like know Frank Miller's work and like, what would you ask him? And, you know, of course, Ed being Ed sends me like the most like weird shit that I even, you know, it's like Frank Miller's zines from when he was 16, which <laughs> I'm like, what, How did, you know, there's like no, no copies in print. Like it was like early, early, you could see the early beginnings of Sin City. He's like, yeah, Dave, I'd always want to ask him this. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to put it in there. And then I just, I just write all night questions, questions, compile my own thoughts, everyone else's, and, and I'm looking at it. And they're just all daredevil, dark night. It's, you know, and I think about that a lot sometimes, you know, cause I, you know, like I've, I've met a singer of like a very famous band who, you know, he's in his sixties and he sings songs on stage that he wrote 40 years ago, <laughs> you know, it's like, bro, you were a teenager when you wrote that and you're 16. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, how does it feel? And he's like, he's like, I like, you know, the energy of the audience, like, you know, the crowd is going in. They'll actually kill me if I don't sing that song, you know, but I go, how do you feel? And he goes, I fucking hate it. I hate fucking singing. <laughs> I was an angry teenager when I wrote that song. I'm an old grandpa now. Like I want to do other shit, you know? So I, I, I projected that feeling on the Frank without ever having meeting him. I'm like, does this guy ever want to talk about Batman again? Or does he want to just because, you know, like some codependent relationship with the audience and fan service stuff like it does. I have no idea. Maybe he wants to be an abstract artist, maybe, you know. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, I, I, I want to know Frank Miller, the, or I think I want to know Frank Miller, the man, the person, the human, not like, are you going to do another dark night, you know, with weird computer coloring or, you know, like, so I go, I, I, I kind of couldn't sleep. You know, because it was all the seeing all the original art, all the conversation, you know, as Ed, Ed was saying, it was I was comic booked out like it was a lot. And uh, and then they call me the next morning and they're like, hey, um, actually, you know, when we asked you to interview Frank, we, we asked a bunch of people at the same time. And uh, Jock said first, yes. And I said, well, I I, 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 I fucking texted you back pretty quick. And they're like, well, he was sitting next to him. So he said, you know, I was like, whatever, I'll come just as a fan. Like, I don't have to. And he's he's like, well, Jock is cool if you you're on. And I'm like, this is my perfect scenario. If I if someone else is doing all the heavy lifting and I can just observe and they're like, perfect. So I get to L.A. Comic Con. L.A. Comic Con is in the convention center downtown. And it's like the first con I think in the first time they've been back since the pandemic. So it is, it is insane. You know, you have the, the Mexican uh, hot dog vendors with the bacon wrapped hot dog. And you, there's like 30 of them. You smell it and you see a giant um, Totoro and 
Co- Dragon Ball. crowd's got to be a good crowd for the bacon wrapped hot dog vendor. <laughs> oh my god, dude! It's I, I was like maybe I should have one just to like get get it out of my system, you know. And I haven't actually been to a comic con since the pandemic either, so it's I'm getting pumped up, and everyone, you know, everyone is. And, and the guy that's my handler comes and he's like, do you want to wear a stormtrooper mask and we'll like get you to the front so no one's bothering you? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> like nobody gives a shit about me. And I get there. And since the pandemic, my TV show came out, which in my day to day life has an effect. You know, it's not like I can't go to the supermarket, but there was like a small, tiny crowd of people like. I got the paparazzi experience and I was like, yeah, maybe I should have got the stormtrooper helmet, but there was people like, Hey, sign this and sign this. And I had just recently done a few variants for, and they had them. And I, and I was like, this was total last minute. The, the comic con didn't market Dave Cho interviewing Frank Miller, any of this stuff. And <clears throat> so I was like, this is, this is new. Like I, I'm used to just w- rolling around and no one bothering me. And, you know, so, People are like, draw me Batman, draw me. And I'm like drawing this shitty Batman while I'm walking around. And so I'm I'm like, whoa, this is this is nice to be back with the with this audience again. And as soon as I get in, um uh there's a panel. Ah shit, what's the actor's name? It was a Mandalorian panel. Uh oh, fuck. Can't remember the name, but there's an actor from the Mandalorian. And there's no, it's not like Comic-Con where there's a hall and there's separate rooms. You're just in the open. There's loud mics, like, you know, shitty sound system. And so like, the, it's just the giant open room and the panel is just like happening. So whether you're into the Mandalorian or not, it's just happening. And then um, uh, I, I'm walking around, soaking it in. And then I see the line to uh, Frank Miller sign. He was gonna sign and then just go up on stage. So I see um, this huge line of people and he's, I go, there he is, you know, and very mysterious looking dude, you know, he's wearing a t-shirt of like this really cute, like a uh, bird, like a chicken, like a Pokemon looking chicken. And he's all the man in black, black jacket, black hat. And there he is signing. And so, um, you know, I don't want to just like jump up and go, Hey, I'm Dave. I'm going to, and, and, and here's the other thing. I have no idea if he even knows who I am. Right. So there's a wall of, um, he, you know, those white blank cover comics where he, you could draw a sketch on him. So there's like six of them that he did of like the Punisher daredevil, you know, Carrie Kelly, Batman. And, and so this is my first time seeing in, in person, like, you know, the older Frank Miller drawings and, First thought is like sad because it's not the Frank Miller from Dark Knight or Sin City. It's like way looser and chunkier. And the nerd in me is like, fuck, I want I want old Frank, you know, like and then second is like, OK, let's see. Look, and it's I'm like, maybe I like this better because it's like looser and it's it. you can still see that it's Frank Miller, but it's just the essence of him. And And in that moment, I was like, he should do a kid's book. Like this would, this would like lend itself well to it. Like kid, you know, and I look closely and all of it is penciled first. So all of the sketches have like this light pencil, even though the Sharpie drawing is really loose, like there's a pencil underlying and, and, you know, he didn't erase the pencil so you can see the pencil. And then, um, and then it's time. They're like, okay, Frank, you ready to go up? And I'm like, this is now not not to make this thing so vulgar. Now this would be the equivalent of um, you're into like a porn star or something, and you don't even meet her. You just fuck her on stage in front of two thousand people. You know, <laughs> it's like there's no like meeting them at their house and get you know. So I meet Frank's agent, um, Celine, who's like this fiery French woman. She's like amazing. She's like very passionate, and she's like Dave, and she comes and she gives me a kiss and a hug, and she's like. Uh, she's like, Frank is very excited to meet you. And I'm like, oh, he is like, <laughs> like, are you sure? And she's like, um, she knows who I am. Like, she, she's kind of familiar with my work. And she's like, this is this is like the best case, you know, Gerard de- dropped out and we didn't know what we we're going to do. And 
and uh, and she's like, this is this is perfect. Like you're a real artist, and not this comic. You know, an artist interviewing an artist. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You know, so she's getting me all Shock's pumped on up. On the other side of her, just hanging his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm walking. I'm walking like kind of behind Frank. And we're walking and then I meet Jock and I've never met Jock before. And, you know, I thought I was going to see a Jock, like a, like that's like a, it's a pretty crazy name to pick for a comic book artist, you know? And he's very sweet guy from the UK. And he's just like, he's, I'm like, bro, this is your show. I'm going to, I'm going to stay out of it. And he's like, he's like, dude, I had no fucking, I thought it was going to be in a room with Frank Miller fans. I didn't know it was going to be out in the open with thousands of people like that are into Pokemon and other, you know, most people, let's be honest, most people there aren't there for comics. It's a lot of cosplay, a lot of Pokemon, a lot of uh, all this other stuff. And I'm like, look, it's, you know, you're, and he, and he knows Frank's, he's buddies with him. So I, I'm like, you guys have your conversation and I'll just jump in and like, I just want to enjoy the show, you know? So we get to the stage, we get to the thing, and then, you know, I say hi to Frank. <laughs> I'm like, what's up, man? I'm getting, my throat's getting like dry right now, just <laughs> like, thinking about it. And um, I don't know if I started shaking, but I could have easily. And I know what that's like, because sometimes people shake when they meet me, which is like such a weird feeling. And I, and I could feel them shaking. And I'm like, hey. I look at them and I go, hey, look, I'm just a person like you. And they're like, no, you're like God. And, you know, I go, hey. And then I just like calm down. And I, I'm guessing I was like that. And so Jock is, I could see between Jock and Frank that they're homies, you know, they're like, they know each other. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, I, I don't, I, I'm like, hey guys, I don't need to be on stage. You know, like I'm, I'm like the, the third threesome that like, the ugly hooker that showed up that everyone's like, yeah, we don't really need them, you know? And they're like, no, no, Dave, you got to be there. And I'm like, are you sure? Cause it's, it looks like you guys are homies and you know, you guys could just have like a conversation, like friends conversation, you know? And they're like, no, Dave, you should, you should. I'm like, all right. So I meet the guy literally two seconds before going on stage and I walk on stage and it's just like, I'm trying to set it up for you guys. Like I'm sitting here in my room, like, if I do interviews at Zoom, like I don't leave the house that much. Like my life is very quiet these days. And then to all of a sudden just meet your hero, boom. And then you're on stage and my throat's crap. You know, it's all dry and raspy and there's all these people. There's a Carrie Kelly cosplay in the front. It, it was very jarring, you know, it was like, oh shit. Like I'm in the limelight again. This is like kind of, this is kind of nuts. <clears throat> so I come on stage they announced me first and uh, and then Frank comes up and once again, this is a Frank Miller audience panel. So there's all these Frank Miller people there and these people in the audience, like I'm not going to make it sound like it was hundreds, like maybe five guys, Dave Cho, Dave Cho, DVDS, you know, they're like screaming my old podcast. They're screaming Cho Cho and like, I have, I don't have as many fans as Frank Miller, but my fans are like mentally disturbed, you know, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. And we sit down and I'm, and you know, the, the announcer announces Jock, she announces Frank, everyone sits down. And then I look over and I, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable. I'm getting better at it with like just pauses. And I was just waiting for like Jock to just jump in and he didn't. So first things first, I just, I just, I just, I just start with his parents. I go, Hey, tell me about, cause for me, I love that question. He's never been asked that. You've no, never it, read a million interviews with Frank Miller. Never about that stuff. You always make assumptions and things. And it was so cool to get that, that bit in stone for sure. Yeah. I thought, I thought that was really great. And, and, you know, like you're talking about thinking of questions and thinking about this, you know, uh, in advance of the interview, Dave, uh, I'm glad to hear that because you strike me as very good, um, on the fly, uh, in front of an audience, um, all these things. And so as I was watching that, I wondered like how much of this is, is planned? How much of this did you come up with ahead of time? And what are you doing just on your feet there? Um, so great question. Uh, I thought it was well, awesome. Well, look, it's like this. 
you could say comic books are niche and whatever and you go no they're not they're a big part of hollywood movies or whatever but like the the act of still becoming a comic book artist or writer is very niche i think still it's a weird thing whether you're a first generation immigrant second third it it doesn't matter how long you've lived in america your family to to tell to have a dream as a kid and then to tell your parents and i'll ask you guys right now like quick answer like were the parents supportive or not supportive? Yes. Mine, mine had no idea how it worked. They wanted me to be able to feed myself. So it would be okay if I could get a paycheck, but you know, right. they had no idea. So they were, they were neither supportive or against it as long as they thought I'd be able to take care of myself. I think mine, well, mine was like mixed between your, your guys. It was like my mom just super supportive my whole life of like, all the creativity, anything, there was never a no, like that you can't do that. It's like, but when it was like, hey, I really want to draw comics for a living. It was like, you could hear the doubt, like, yeah, sure. But like, that's not a real job. Like, that's not like, do you understand like how hard it is to make money? Like forever drawing, you know, like you're going to draw comics forever. Like, you're going to be the one guy that invents a Mickey Mouse or a Superman, like, you you know, so it's like, cool story, bro, but maybe like have a backup plan. And so I, I just when I when I meet someone like Frank Miller, I always like just like, I'm, I'm just thinking of the what the art I saw the night before and the what what kind of parent like supported that? You know, what kind of parent like what kind of childhood did he like? Because when I read it, and I'll tell you guys the truth, like I was like, he must have had an abusive father. Like you don't write a story like Dark Knight Returns. You don't become the godfather of like gritty, realistic, you know, Batman returning to this without <laughs> having a dude that just beat the shit out of you. That's I, that's a story I made up in my head. And that's he's interesting like, too. That's something I've never even considered reading that that material. I'm reading that, and I'm just like this it's hitting there's something that resonates with his work whether it's sin city or you know it, it's just it's hitting something that's like he's drawing it in a way but it's also it's 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 all the reasons why sin city to me doesn't work as a movie like it's still entertaining but it's just there's something very like like you're with marv when you read it like it, and it's like all this ridiculous shit isn't ridiculous when it's drawn that way and it just makes me think of what what kind of human made this and what kind of environment was he raised in that he could make something like this and unless he was bullshitting me he was like mom was super supportive mom was like yes you know swastika nipples go for it you know <laughs> um, when, when when you say that part in the panel like we were in the airplane and yeah. uh in fact like the the photos from the david mandel thing like i was showing jimmy to, like when I the first piece of business when I landed in Hawaii was to see if you were down for this conversation right here, and mm -hmm. I wanted to throw it to Jimmy to see if you know to see what he thought. So we were looking at the artwork, and uh, that from the Mandel thing, and so that helped us get a half hour closer to to Hawaii. But uh, I'm sitting there on my little iPad, watching your panel, and J and Jimmy's watching some stuff with his wife. And when you start talking about some of that shit, dude, I start fucking crying, laughing, and Jimmy can't help <laughs> but like look over and see what the hell's going on, man. Anyhow. Well, look, we all know what that is, right? It's it's burned into our minds. There's a fucking woman with a machine gun with ninja star shaped swastika pasties, you know? And this is like in the 80s, right? It's like you wouldn't do that now today in a DC. So I'm sitting here and my, my life today is, or my, my, you know, I talked about a lot of this in my interview with you guys already, but my, my, my life is do whatever the fuck you want, right? Fuck Marvel, fuck DC, fuck image, fuck everybody. Do zines, do graffiti, like no editors, no publisher, like do DIY, do it yourself, get out, you know, and that's that's how I made my living. That's how I and that's how I was able to, you know, make a small fortune and do everything is I just I just went for it. I never stopped to look at the practical. Well, that doesn't make sense or that's not going to make, you know, 
And now I'm older. I, my life is, you know, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable in my life. And I do so many fucking Zoom meetings with like, you know, if I want to do a cartoon or if I want to do another TV show. And it's just like, it's that's you guys heard this before. It's like, we love you, Dave. We love you. You're crazy, man. Wow. You, we love you for you, for your unique thing that you bring to the table. And then how can we just hack away at it? How can we just I've never done comics since slow jams. Like I did some zines, whatever this year, like for whatever reason. And I, I don't know the comic book market so much as far as like, I, I don't buy really a lot of variant covers, but there it is. The people are like, someone at DC asked me, Hey, you want to do a variant? Someone at Marvel asked me, do you want to do a variant? Someone at image. And I was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to be asked to do an actual Batman comic a Joker comic, a Superman comic. So the closest I'm going to get is a variant cover. Right. And it, it was like, it was, it was to fulfill that childhood fantasy. I want to say I've drawn Superman for DC comics, even if it's like a retailer, like variant edition, you know, it's a fucking cover, dude. I'm fucking Dave Cho. Like it's going to sell. Like, you know, like I start getting pushback right away. You know, that's crazy, I start getting yeah. pushed. They're like, yeah, you know, like this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, I drew Raphael, you know, for for the last Ronin. One of the sickest paintings I've ever done. Right. They're like, uh, why? You know, this painting, you know, th these are com this is a comic book editor looking at like this fucking super layered painting. I did pouring everything I love about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles knowing that I'll probably never draw a comic. So I'm just pouring it into this painting. And they're like, what? I'll send it to you guys if you want to see it. But it's just like, why is this like this? Why is there a foot like hidden in his face? And the ego just flares up. You know the fuck I am? You know how much you could sell this original? Like, fuck you, bitch. You mother, you know? And, and then the guy who's like uh, moderating all this stuff for me is like, Dave, these are comic book people. They're not fine art people. You're bringing this fine art. And, and I go, Frank fucking didn't do that shit. Frank fucking like every, the way he drew the cape, the fucking Batman's face, the Joker suit, that was fucking fine art, man. That cover, the set, like where his whole body fills the frame. Like that's that, like Lynn Varley's watercolors, that shit, that fuck, you know. And so that's all coming up in the interview of, I've only done variants and I get pushed back. And I'm fucking selling my art for millions of dollars. You motherfuckers, you <laughs> fucking pussies. Like, so that's all in me from doing three variant covers. I'm like, what's it like to be Jock? What's it like to be Daniel Warren Johnson? What's it like to be Brian K. Vaughn? What's it like to be Frank Miller? To be the fucking best artist, the best fucking writer and being like, hey, we've already seen a million Jokers. We've already seen a million Batmans. How can we push this art form forward? You're going to have to go out of your comfort zone a little bit, right? In the same way, some editor must have seen a swastika ninja star nipple and was like, I don't know if that's cool, but let's fuck it. You know, it's the 80s. Let's go for it, you know? So I, I, that's how I feel. I project that question onto Frank, and then Jock steps in. He's like, well, Dave, <laughs> I don't know. Treat, you know. treats me pretty great. And then, <laughs> and I see that big Look. smile on your face, man. <laughs> and I, I have a lot of inferences. It's just a slow like, grin. <laughs> yeah. Builds. yeah, tell Jock, us more, Jock. Listening, like, I, I got to, I brought out with Jock for a few hours after, so we got to know each other. Jock, you're awesome. But, like, in, in that moment, I was like, Jock, like, I've seen your art. Like, no, no, you know, no, no, no disrespect to your art. It's awesome. It's, but it's, it's salt. Are you the guy that's going to be the guy that's, gonna like push the or are you gonna just you know it kind of is solid superhero stuff there's nothing on it that's like so offensive or so like oh fuck dude i can't believe he did that you know so he's and even he, actually to his credit he even said it in the review he's like i might not be the guy that is pushing it that way but he's like yeah i don't get any pushback from them and i'm like good for you bro you know got a check from him last week man you better say something nice <laughs> so i'm like i don't know if this uh three man three-way interview threesome is is the you know it's awkward it's right it, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the, actually the tones changed for sure like whenever like 
when he chimed in with that, like it, it created like the flow changed a little bit. Like sometimes the idea of it is better than, you know, like in my mind, I'm like, Jock is already homies with Frank. I'm like the, the out, outlier coming in. I'm not really from comic books. And so I'm sitting there and uh, um, I'm just like, I, I don't know if this is a, a good threesome, but whatever it is, it, you know, so I'm sitting there and at, at that moment, I'm like, um, I, sh I should just shut up and like, like I'm talking too much already, you know? And as someone who used to do a lot of podcasting, I'm noticing Frank's talking with the mic here. So I'm like pushing the mic, you know, it's like people are like, can't hear you, Frank. And in the meantime, maybe this got me juiced up a little bit. I don't know if you guys can hear it in the audio. There's like one like seriously, actually mentally ill person sitting in the front row. Of course, he's my fan. And he's like, tell us when, Dave, tell us when. And I'm like, holy fuck, can someone get that guy out of here? And he's screaming. And and, and I at, at, at first, I didn't. I didn't know if he was like actually mentally ill. And so I, I was like, hey, what's that guy saying in the front? And he's screaming, tell us when, Dave, tell us when. And then the people around him start going like, that guy is like crazy. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm like, this is a weird, this is like a weird vibe. You know, there's like a black Batman in the front. There's a Carrie Kelly right here. There's a, there's a crazy fan right here. There's like weird Dragon Ball cosplay. I'm like, I'm in a weird vibe. I'm like you're in a giant place the, the the no one can hear frank the the volume's echoing out his mic's far away and i'm like you know what i'm gonna sit back and just let jock jock do this and then jock's like uh let's open it up to the audience <laughs> i'm like don't do that <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. dude. And i'm like of course it's like when are you gonna bring back all-star batman like like are you gonna do daredevil again i'm like so once again it's me getting mad for Frank. Like, I don't even know if he likes answering those questions, but I'm like, I don't want to answer those questions if I was Frank. So I'm like, all right, no more questions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like telling the story all out of order. And once again, it's like, I, I, I want to know. Okay, so I'll tell you guys, the, the story I make up is a very romantic one. Like as a kid reading Dark Knight Returns, I don't know that Frank is married to Lynn Varley. But as I get older and I start learning, it's like, wow, artist couple, you draw and I paint over it. That's so cool. These beautiful washes. I'm going to draw the silhouette. You do the airbrushed lightning bolt. Like, that's fucking rad, dude. Like, that's amazing. So then, you know, Wizard Magazine, Comics Journal, as, as we start to get to know more, you know, like in, back in the day before all this comics journalism, you didn't, the comic book artist was mysterious. You didn't know that much about their life. And so I built up this romantic vision in my head of like this loving couple that they just are sitting in a studio with their desk next to each other. And I finish drawing, I pass it over you. You do a beautiful wash over it. And it's just, it's sick. Or like later when it was the computer coloring, I pass it over to you, you scan it, you do your Photoshop colors over it. And all I know is that they're not together, right? I, I don't know if it was an ugly divorce. I don't know any of that stuff. But so just from the few seconds that I met him before we went on stage, you know, I don't know if Selene, this French woman, is his wife or his girlfriend. She's like, oh, no, I'm just his agent. And I'm like, oh, is Frank married? And he's like, no, he doesn't have kids. He's not married. So just from that little piece of information, I'm like, I don't know if his I don't know when he got divorced. I don't know um, how ugly his divorce was. I don't know. Like, he's an older guy now. I don't know if he's fulfilled in his life and his legacy of like, I made Sin City, I made Dark Knight, I did Daredevil, that's enough. I don't want like a family. I don't want to be married. I don't want, but my suspicion is there's something super romantic about all Frank Miller comics. And there's always a woman, there's a dame. I'm like, dude, he's gotta like, so the question I make up in my head or the, the, the question I wanna know the answer to is, like for me, sometimes I'm good now. Like I have a wonderful family. My life's awesome. But before I had that, I would once in a while, like usually like this time of year at the end of the year, do like a, a like like a stroll down memory lane. Like uh, this is a wonderful life. Let's visit the ghosts of Christmas past. Like was that girlfriend so bad? 
was that? You know, like, like, like women that wanted to kill me or I wanted to kill them, like thinking back, like it's been 10 years, you know, water under the bridge. Maybe, maybe they change. Maybe I change. Maybe, you know, so that's, that's all, you know, as a super fan, the comic book side, but just as on the human side, is there any part of him that was like, because he's currently, as far as I know, he's not romantically involved. Is there like anything there to revisit, you know? And I think you guys could tell, he thought I was asking about just professionally. He's like, oh yeah, I guess Lynn moved on. And I was like, no, nah, bro, I want to know if you guys are going to get back <laughs> or if there, if you've ever even thought about it, you know, because you hear about people who get divorced and then get remarried or, you know, whatever. I have no idea what Lynn Varley's life like. And and he's like, bro, that is none of your business. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, like, that was such an incredible question. It, it was great. Just as a fan of, of interviews, you know, like we try to do these interviews on here and I read like Howard Stern, how he does interviews and stuff. Just as a fan of interviews, that was an amazing question. Because <laughs> because here's what, it was it was an unorthodox pugilism, man. Because because you asked you you brought up the stuff about the art, the washes, how it motivated you to to draw and paint and stuff, and re really laying it on thick, man. Like excellent there because he got super comfortable. But Thank but you. he he launched into his sound bites. How many times did this motherfucking guy get interviewed over time? And uh, he launched into some sound bite stuff. And then when you ask, like, so it'll never happen again, he was still in soundbite mode of like, yeah. you know, like collaborations done or whatever. They used to say romantically, <laughs> and 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 it, it knocked him off his foundation. Like, there's a couple of uh, a little bit of dead silence there where you see him actually like have to like launch into and like have a real answer, which yeah. was great as well. Like, you get to see him on his feet a little bit exactly. there, you know, like in the moment, and that that was really cool to see. Like, I thought he hand, I thought balls to ask that question and then i thought frank miller answered that very well yeah and like i for me i'm like you know walking off stage like i'm like dude i'm not trying to like be a he's like bro if you were if you're going too far i would have let you know i'm like okay cool thanks and then and then um yeah i i, I remember just because i had just seen his art with the sharpie and the pencils and i wanted to ask him about that because I'm like, here's this guy. Here's the other thing is I don't know if he heard me that well because we're talking in the mics, it's blasting. So a lot of his questions, it's exactly what you guys were saying. He would go into this like answer and I'm like, bro, that's not what I asked you. And one of the ones that I, I had, a, I have this experience a lot where I'll be walking down the street and someone will like chase me down and be like, like almost be crying and like kind of shaking and be like, this is what your art meant to me. Like you did this, or I saw you on this thumbs up, the hitchhiking, you know, they'll tell me something I did in their life that deeply impacted them. And I'll be like, you know, and they're like, I, and I just wanted to tell you that because in, in that way, this is how you changed my art. Can I show it to you? And I'm like, yeah. And then they'll show me their art and it's like the worst art I've ever seen. And there's a part of me that's like, wow, like, I don't want to crush this dude or, or girl, but they they got all the lessons wrong, right? Whatever I was trying to put out into the world, they just took the, I can lay it on thick sometimes, you know? And it's like, you just got the pizzazz part. You didn't get the, the essence of what, I, you know? And, and like, there's a part of me that's like, can you please not tell anyone that you were influenced by me, <laughs> you know? And, and, I, and, and, and then once in a while, someone gets it. Right. It's not the art. It's not the style. It's not the technique. It's the essence of this fucking fearlessness. Right. This like like just the one life, just charge it, you know, and and then in those moments, I usually hire that person. Right. And I look at, at the amount of people that have just been influenced by this guy's work, his writing. And it's just all. This is mean to say it's not all shitty. A lot of it is shitty. Right. They just got like the style part, part, right? They're like, oh, I'm gonna draw bricks the way he does, or I'm gonna do gritting teeth the way he does. But it's like, dude, you're missing the point. Like he's, this guy's a romantic, this guy's a fearless, like this guy's out of, you know. <clears throat> so the way he like, like people, I feel like they got it wrong. You know, a lot of people don't, they just pick up the style part and they don't get the heart of, of what he is. And and so you have this guy <clears throat> who, like we said in the interview, it's like, if comics is a cult, which it is, he's, he's my cult leader. 
and he's he's the guy the godfather that changed you know innocent like goofy campy batman into like this gritty heralded in with with uh alan moore like this like gritty realistic that's st- that still touches us to this day right like and i'm like how cool would that be if instead of being known for that cuz he's like he's like a goofy guy i got to hang out with him after but like after if he just went into kids books right like no cussing no adult theme material just i that's actually something i would want to see cuz there's actually, you know, I'll go into a bookstore and I'll have, and I think I talked about this last time, I'll have this feeling of like, wow, I'm in my, I'm, I'm in my mid forties. And so is everyone else in here. A young guy at the comic book store is, is like 35, you know? And I'm like, there's no new blood coming in. And so I go, let me see what a kid's Spider-Man looks like. Let me see what a kid's Wonder Woman looks like. They're okay, but they're all kind of shitty. They're not like, they're not bring. They're not going to bring in the next generation, the new blood. So this, you know, I know everyone always says comic books is going to die. Well, here's the other thing: it might not be American comic books, because kids fucking love manga. They love anime, and if you see the wall of comic books that's in the Barnes and Nobles or whatever for Japanese comics, it's out of control. So it might not be American comics. It'll probably be Japanese comics. It'll be some version of Pokemon and Dragon Ball, something like that. But I, I, for me personally, I would love to see a Frank Miller, you know, and then, uh, oh yeah, one of the other aw- awkward threesome things was, I want to see Frank draw without sketching first. Like, bro, you're, I don't know how old he is, if he's in his 60s or whatever, like, you know how to draw. You've drawn your whole life. You don't need a guideline anymore. Like, fucking let the cage bird sing. Like, just fucking get out of there. And he's like, and then he gave this answer of like, I like to do this rough sketch and then within that sketch go crazy. I'm like, how about just go crazy? And then and then I think Jock stepped in and said something. And I was like, God, this is not going. I'm trying to shoot my load and like you keep, you know, shopping stopping me short. Um Jock, I love you. You're a great guy. It was uh it was an awkward, you know what? The best threesomes are awkward threesomes. You know, there's a weird elbow here, whatever. And then as I'm talking to him about this kid's book shit, I'm noticing this giant anime bird on his chest. And I'm like, Frank's a wacky dude. Like, he's like this mysterious black hat, black jacket guy, and he's wearing this loud. I didn't know this till later. Well, so I think he's a fan of this artist. And I'm like, who drew that? And it's like this guy named Warby. Shout out to Warby if you're out there. And everyone in the audience says, he's got a booth over there. He's got a booth over there. This is like, someone go get him. Like, this might be a fucking Frank Miller collab for, you know, he might be the artist for... So someone runs and grabs him and it's just like this sweet Thai kid. And he comes up on stage, his English isn't great. And he's like, whoa, he's like, honor to meet you. Can I take, and immediately I could tell, this guy has no idea who Frank Miller is. <laughs> he has no idea. You, my, my, on the stage, <laughs> like, I thought he was like, he was like, he was just like wanted to take a picture cause he didn't know what he was doing on stage. And then um, he like leaves the stage and, and I'm like, that guy has no idea. And then later someone's like, yeah, Frank Frank was cold, so I got him this sweater from like this random booth. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious he, because that's probably like, both he, of them from either side, like their perspective on that whole experience is like, what who was that? The only thing it chewed up it chewed up like ten minutes, man. Yeah. Like you could have been asking cra- more crazy shit. I, but look, dude, after the after the show, I walk past Warby's booth, line around the block. No doubt. <laughs> the people were like the speculators was like this is the next artist for the next frank miller like you know um so he he got hooked up and shit who knows it, it might happen so it's a pretty funny moment in a, you know in a panel like it, it it continues the idea of like make the panel memorable in some way that's a pretty funny moment that whole exchange yeah and and so that's the end of the thing they're like time's up I, i'm i'm like you know, immediately I go into you suck, Dave, you did the worst job. That was so shitty. Like that Thai kid didn't even know who Frank was like you and Jock were like kind of like stepping over each other. And then I walk off stage and someone just like slaps me on the back and like, you got Frank Miller to say pussy. And I was like, like what? I know I didn't. And they're like, yeah, you know, that part when you called Marvel and DC pussies, like that kind of shook Frank. And then he ended up saying pussy later. And I was like, oh, I didn't even like, I, I sorry, I didn't even hear that part. And he's like, that was awesome. That was the best interview. And I'm like, and I was like, all right, I feel a little good. And, 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 and I go, and I still want to read Frank Miller books, you know, 
I get off stage and someone uh, runs up and, and uh, has all my variants. Uh, like, they're like, Joe, can you sign these? And Frank looks over and he's like, you're an artist? <laughs> he's like, he's like, you drew these? And I'm like, yeah. And he looks at him and he's like, what the fuck, dude? These are like amazing. Like, I've never seen Batman. You made Batman into like a landscape. And I'm like, yeah. And look at all this shit in his utility belt. He's like, he's like, fuck, man. If I knew you were an artist, I would have like, I would have just been asking you questions the whole time up there. And I'm like, well, I'm kind of glad you didn't know then. Like, it's it was better. It, it Everything happened the way it needed to happen. I give him a hug. I take a picture with him. I, I, I go to Salon. Thank you. And she's like, we're, we're almost done here. Like, you, sh you should come to dinner. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, yeah, maybe, you know, I, I, I'm with, uh, Eddie, like we go eat in Japantown. I do a debrief with him. Eddie's the guy that set up the, the meeting, Eddie Troy. Um, he used to work at DC and I'm like, like I could die now, you know, like it, it's just like, I got to see original Frank Miller art in person. Then I got to meet the guy. I did this panel you know, and like I said, I put my arm around him like, Frank, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. He's like, bro, we had a great time. Selene came up to me after and she's like, thank you. Thank you that this wasn't another just boring, you know, she's like, it was awesome. Frank had a great time and, and like, come to, come to dinner. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, Frank's not going to ask you to come to dinner if, if he had a shitty time, you know? And I'm like, okay, let me think about it. And so I'm at dinner thinking about if I should go to dinner. And I'm like, let me just do my recap. I saw the original art. I met the man. I fucking interviewed him on stage. And like, he was awesome. I did an okay job. And like, it can only go downhill now, right? It can only go downhill. And to, to make the comic book week even crazier, uh, Rafael Grandpa came up from Brazil. And he's another guy that I've been talking through through the pandemic. He shows me the next shit he got coming up with Batman. It's fucking insane. He tells me the story of how he shot his shot with Frank Miller. Like Frank pretty much considers him a son now. And it's just like, he went for it. You know, he, he showed him his art. Like he took him out to dinner in Brazil when they were all there for a comic con, Jim Lee was there. And then same thing, like Frank just like embraced him and was like, let's do something together. And that's how, that's how their Batman thing came out. So I'm meeting with uh, Raphael, you know, the week before, and he's telling me how, how he met Frank and, and, and he's just like, dude, it was, it was amazing. And then at some point, Frank wanted to just kick it, you know, like his manager told him, you know, Frank can be like, you know, he, he if he doesn't like you, he's gonna tell you to fuck off, you know, but then he loved him and they were hanging out. And at some point he's like, dude, I got to bounce, you know? And, and I, I felt like I was at that point. I was like, this, this is like the perfect date, you know? you can't like go knock on the playboy models door after you just fucked her and like one more time. Like, it's like, it was a beautiful evening. Like just, we know you're still horny, but just go home. Like, just like, it can only go bad from here. Like, I, I don't, who the fuck wants to hang out after you sign comics for 10 hours. Right. So I get in my car. I'm like, this was like the perfect week. I met all my heroes. I met all these people I want to work with. I shot my shot with everyone. I'm, I'm just going to go home, relax, and just maybe read Dark Knight and jerk off to it or something, you know? So I get in my car. I'm almost home. And then I get a text from Selene. She's like, we just finished signing. It's like 930. I'm like, how long were you guys signing for? She's like, 10 hours. I've never done a signing for 10 hours. I guess Frank talks to everyone and, you know, he's not as fast as he used to be. I'm like, he doesn't want to fucking hang out. He wants to probably eat scarf dinner down and then go to sleep. He's like, no, he loves, he wants to meet you. He wants to hang out. I'm like, are you sure? She's like, yeah. I'm like, fuck it. Turn the car around, drive back 30 minutes back to downtown. Um, it's uh, Selene, Frank, his bodyguard, uh, Jock, and it's in the JW Marriott, which was having some kind of basketball, like amateur, like it was insane. It's like, in, it's like it was like Comic-Con again. It's just, you can't hear, it's in like a loud outdoor, like open kind of restaurant. People are screaming, there's like, athletic like jock type people and there's jock and there's comic book people and i'm like there's frank and i'm walking up to frank and i have some free shit to give him and right as i'm about to sit out sit down at the table this like mob of koreans rolls up to me this asian kid with blonde hair 
You guys see that movie Parasite? Yeah. So in that movie Parasite, you know, the kid's an artist and he draws. So the stuff that the mom frames on the wall, this kid with the blonde hair that rolls up to me is the guy that actually did the art. And he's crying. He's crying, you know? And shit, man, I wish I remembered his name, but he rolls up to me. He, he's, he's like, puts his arms on my shoulders and he's like, like, you're my hero. And, and for me, this is the absolute, if, if any fans are watching out there, I used to say this, like, you, you want, there's no point in being famous like that unless your hero or the girl you're trying to be with is noticing that, right? So Frank's about to bite into his steak and he's looking over and these people are crying meeting me, right? They're like, you're my hero. You you know what your art meant to me? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm about to meet the guy that did that for me. And and so they're, they're, one, they're like, oh, can you draw a sketch for me? Can you know? So these like, this like mob of Koreans, dude, if, if that guy's listening, sorry if I don't remember your name, but like, so the Frank Miller table is watching that happen. And so now Frank's like, oh shit, this guy's like an actual legit artist. Like people know him, like they cry when they meet him kind of guy. So I think I got a little bit more like respect from him just, you know, so then I got to sit down and like, even like I said, the acoustics were horrible in this room, but like I basically did with him what I just did with you guys. I'm like, Frank, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful about the Lynn Varley question. I wasn't, you know, and so in that moment, like I'm recapping all the questions because I'm like, this is what I was trying to say. I think you didn't hear me correctly, you know, and then he's like, oh, OK. And so we're getting into it. We're chopping it up. And the same way, like it can happen to all of us, right? We know what we know. We draw the way we like. We are in our comfort zone. I go, Frank, are, you know, I had a bag full of crayons. I'm like, Frank, are you down to draw with your non-dominant hand, with your eyes closed, you know, like, cause you see him all, he, the line that's waiting for him, draw Electra, draw Daredevil, draw Marv, draw Batman. He knows how to draw what he draws. I go, can you draw pizza man? And he's like, who's pizza man? I go, I don't know, Frank, you tell me. So then he, he draw, he's like cursing the whole time. He's like, fuck. And he draws this guy with a pizza head with his, with his left hand. And, and he's just like, fuck, you know, he's like, fuck you, Dave, <laughs> you know? And then Jock's like, I want to try. So then Jock does one. And then Frank's, and then, you know, it was an amazing night. We talked comics. I, and we talked about like that kid Warby, kids books, all this shit. I got all these free Frank Miller sketches in my, in my like, like just, he drew Batman with his eyes closed like this. And so Batman's front part of his face is here. And then his jaw is like down here. It looks like a Picasso Batman. As soon as I got home, I like, I like watercolored it and I sent it to him. He loved it. Um, or he told me he loved it, but you know, dinner was going on like three hours. Some people were getting drunk. Frank's, um, not drinking anymore. So Frank was sober, but like people are getting wasted and I'm like, it's getting to be midnight. Nothing good happens after midnight. And I'm just like, I'm like exhausted. Cause I go to sleep early. And like, this is two nights in a row, like where it's like comic book overload, like getting past midnight. And um, I'm like, Frank, you, like, like, you don't, you're not tired, <laughs> you know, like, he's like, he's like, bro, I like to kick it all night, you know, like after, after con this is how I come down. I just like to chill and hang out. And I'm like, him and Jock are chopping it up about, you know, where Jock's from, like, there's miniature horses in this part of England. And, you know, <clears throat> people are getting wasted. I'm like, this night, this day, this week couldn't have gone better. And if I learned anything from my gambling days, it's like, you got to get out while you're ahead. I'm like, I'm going to shoot one last load on his chest before I leave. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, hey, Frank, great meeting you. Great day. Great meeting Selen. Great meeting Jock. Thank you for like jamming sketches, you know, just and um, and uh, and um, He's like, he's like, he was like sad. He was genuinely sad. I was, he was like, you're leaving. And I was like, he's like, dude, I, I got to get up early in the morning. And I gave him a big hug. And I was like, I'm just going to throw it out there. I was like, bro, if you ever want to do anything together, you draw, I write, I write, you draw, we write together, you draw together, adult theme, kids book. I don't give a fuck. You want to do some like, no, but only thing is no sketching, just loosey goosey. Like, like we both established at dinner that we're in bucket list mode. Right. Like Selene steps in, Frank, he's like, 
she's like, you know, Frank doesn't do shit, you know, and she he she he, she told me all the secret projects he's got coming up and like my like pre come again. I'm like, holy fuck, you know. Um, so she's like, he's done everything he needs to do. He can sign a sketch on, on a comic book, make a thousand bucks. Like he, he doesn't need to do anything he doesn't want to do. So at this point in his life, unless it gets his dick hard, like he's not doing shit. And I'm like, that's where I'm at. Like I get hit up all day to do stuff and I don't do anything. And, and so she's like, this might be perfect for you guys. So I go, okay. Night, day, week kind of end perfect. I get in my car, I get on the freeway and I start driving home, smiling ear to ear, just shit eating grin. And holy fuck, what's this? Like, I'm crying. Like, I'm fucking crying. So I'm like, I pull over, throw the hazards on, and I just, I just, I just have a moment to myself. And I'm like, this is like, this is like, if I can't, if I can't like sit here and like, it's just go, go, go always, right? It's like next, this and that. And I'm like, Dude, like, what a fucking awesome life, you know? What an awesome life, like, and, and and in that moment, it's like a young Dave would be like, okay, what's the next letter I'm gonna write to him? What's the art package I'm gonna to to make sure this project happens? I'm like, the project never needs to happen. The fact that I got to meet my hero, he was cool, like the whole vibe was cool, and like he's even open to doing it. It's enough. I'm enough. That's enough. If he dies tomorrow, if I die tomorrow, just the fact that. I live in a world where I, at a fucking eight-year-old kid, got a the fourth, you know, the Batman, Superman silhouette cover. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. And I'm reading it. And I'm very confused as a kid. I don't understand what's happening. I don't know why Batman's face looks like chopped liver and ground beef. I don't get, like, these colors. like, And the fact that that book changed my life. And, yeah, we were making jokes about it. But the guy is my cult leader. I am in a cult. I fucking go pray at the church every Wednesday. I read fucking comic books. This, I, that's my scripture. Like, I go to the fucking movie theater. I watch every shitty Marvel movie. Like, I met, I met my fucking Jesus, you know? And I just, like, I felt it, dude. I felt it. And I just was like, I don't need to ever, like, do something with him. If it happens, that's gravy on top. But just to meet him, to, to be in his presence, to, like, really, like, chop it up with him. And he's fucking... You know, I didn't know what I was going to get into. I've seen pictures of him. He doesn't look that great, you know, lately. And he was awesome, man. He was clear. He was, I was, you know, so I, I just really like sat, sat. I did like, a, I usually try to run away from those kind of feelings. Like, you know, and I just, I just sat in it, man. I just sat, I don't know how long I was there. And, um, you know, in, in that same sketchbook where he drew all the stuff in crayon, I just journaled in crayon. I was like, you know, November, whatever date or December. And I wrote uh, today, I met Frank and I just wrote, wrote out what happened that day and how it felt. And then, <laughs> of course, I'm sending all this stuff to Ed and Ed's like, hey, you want to you want to talk about this on the podcast? I'm like, fuck, yes, let's do it soon before I forget, because I have the shittiest memory. Um, so I'm sure I forgot a lot of little details and I'm, I know I can like get into all these like tiny, like inconsequential details, but that was, that was my weekend, you know, and, you know, I guess I can announce a Frank Miller project coming up, but it's like, <laughs> it's just like, it was a, it was like a, let's do something. And, and, and I don't know, I don't know if it's like a, cause people say that, Hey, let's do something. I'm like, yeah, sure. And then it might be like that, or he might be like, fucking let's really do something. But it That's was gonna have to uh, be the title of this episode: "Breaking News: Frank Miller and Dave Chose <laughs> <laughs> new, new Comic." That, um, that'll beat the Gerard uh, shoot, <laughs> shoot interview, I think. But yeah, I mean, thanks, thank you guys for even asking me to, to, because I don't know. There's like the next day, I have friends that are in the art world and friends who aren't, and I just like was having this same feeling, and I was just like, I can't. You know, there's so few things in this world that get me this excited and and this pumped up. And, you know, like the next day it was. Before I got like all bitter and jaded and like was sleeping with multiple supermodels and whatever, that, that feeling of sleeping with my first supermodel, like just it just stayed with me for weeks. Like like just it was like I can't believe that happened. 
this woman I jerked off to my entire life. I met the real one and it was amazing and it was beautiful and we connected and and it was it was special, you know, and like and then she kept calling me and we kept talking and I was like, oh, it wasn't just like a one like this was great. Um, same thing. The next day I woke up. It's, it's, it's weeks later now. Right. It's like three weeks ago or something. I still feel it. I wake up and um, and I and I draw like every every day since I met Frank and, and, and Brian and all these Dave Mandel, like all these guys, it's just like lighted a fire and I'm drawing more and more every day. I'm buying more comics. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it's lighted a fire under me. It's, it pumped me up and, and uh, yeah, it's just really the, the afterglow of it's, it's staying with me. It's, and, and so I, I blab this to all my friends. I met my hero, this and that. And they're like, cool, cool story, bro. But I'm like, you don't fucking get it, man. I got to talk to people who get it. <laughs> I'm like, Jim gets it. Ed gets it. I need to talk to these guys. So Dave, th- thanks so much, man. It's so, it's so good to get that on the record. Uh, it was, it was really fun just tracking it along through text messages, <laughs> like all, like as, as it was going down, uh, after checking out the panel and I think the entire panel is like on YouTube or something. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I found a lot of inspiration from from your style uh, and approach on that interview. I think it's going to change the way our interviews work a little bit. And sort of what I mean by that is just don't be afraid to ask a question. You know, like ask the question. Uh, we're, we're all adults here. Like they have the opportunity to to answer or not answer. Look, all future kayfabe guests, don't talk to Ed and Jim unless you're ready to get into it. You know, this is like you're, you're going to get into it, right? Yeah, like, no, remember- it's got them right, man. Just ask what, like, the exact stuff that comes to mind, man. Not the stuff that, you know, because like everybody has a little something, and it's like we could go there. They probably don't want to talk about it. I'm not going to answer that part for them in my own head. I'll put the put the question out there. If they want to answer it, they can, and they could say, yep. "Nah, don't want to cover it." Exactly. Yeah, it was so, great. So Frank, call me if you're listening, and I'll give I'll give advice to um, this. This is probably the wrong advice to the to the young. Uh, hungry people out there so i'm 45 right now if i was in my 20s there would already be a frank miller comic book out collab with dave cho because what i have right now is two what some people would argue the shittiest drawings frank miller's ever done in his life in my sketchbook with purple crayon a young dave cho wouldn't wait for frank to call me and say hey let's work on something i would be like i already got it and i would sit down and i would write a short story for each shitty sketch that I got from Frank and some people will argue I will argue that that's the best drawings Frank ever did because it's it's completely free and I would write a story about pizza head pizza man and weird long jaw Picasso face Batman and I would put out a zine and I'd be like I collab with Frank Miller and he'd be maybe he'd send his lawyers after me and we'd have to do another deposition (laughs) Joe Miller deposition but that's what I would do if I was 23 I'd be like fuck waiting for Frank to call me already got it it's already happened you know dave i can tell you that you're still fired up man what if we get off this <laughs> what if we get off this uh this not of, yet what i i have a question dave yeah. uh whenever we were talking last time uh after that ended you sent some videos of roddy piper cutting promos <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. piper's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time so i gotta know tell us anything about it how do you know roddy piper what was going on in those videos he was cutting promos on you man so one of the things that um, shocked me about uh, meeting like all these top talent comic book artists is, uh, and maybe I'm just jaded by like money value stuff, but I couldn't believe, and I'm not gonna say it, I'll tell you guys after, but I, I couldn't believe how little these guys are getting paid, right? Like I couldn't like, like the page rate, I was like, what? This is fucking crazy. And, and I was like, I'll pay you double, come work for me. And they're like, no, we want to do Batman. We want to do, you know. Um, so in that same way, I remember seven seven years ago when I was doing my podcast, you know, I live in L.A. We do L.A. casting and to hire like Mr. T for a day or, you know, like people that are recognizable but haven't worked in like 20 years or whatever. It's like 500 bucks a day to hire them or some, something like that. There's a there's a there's a scale it's like some of them are like 200 and some of them are like 2000 but you'd be surprised who you can get for two thousand dollars like some pretty big names so um 
I'd done a podcast, uh, like an, a super insane podcast. And I'm sure you guys could believe it. It was me in a secluded ranch that I was brought to blindfolded because I couldn't, I couldn't trust myself at that point. I was, my addictions were all out of control. And so I had a bodyguard at the time. He would blindfold me, drive me in the middle of the night to his friend's ranch. That's away from civilization. So I'd have like some art supplies, but I was the biggest threat to me was myself. I couldn't, I didn't want, so I'd be in that ranch and I would hit record and I would record myself talking for six hours at a time, telling people like how to make it in this life. And it was, very, it was uh, the ranch solo DVD ASA episodes. And uh, I put like four of them out, but there's like 20 of them, you know? And it's just me, like, like, like an insane person drooling, like, yeah. <clears throat> So I, I would bring it back and I would play it for like my team and they'd just be like, you sound like a raving lunatic, but in there, there's some gems. You know, it's a hard sell to listen. You know, the, the, the best way to get people to read this stuff is if you would get a celebrity to read it. So cut to LA casting. We're like, the guy didn't flinch. We contact Roddy Piper's uh, agent and he's like, are you down to stand in a warehouse and and with full Roddy Piper classic from, you know, the 80s, you know, read in that wrestling voice six hours of a script. He's in. Absolutely. What about 12 hours? He's in. The guy shows up. I don't know if it's a character or I don't know. He shows up exactly the way you would imagine him wearing a tie-dye blue, like, affliction t-shirt. And just, he's never met me. He doesn't know what this script's about. And just the most, he sells it. He fucking sells it. Just passionately rips through. He's throwing pages as he reads them. 12 hours of me talking at my most mentally insane. And, you know, we put parts of it out. I, my memory's shitty. I don't, I don't know if we ever put the whole thing out. But... And he's like, what, what, what do you want from me? Do you tell me what we want and I'll deliver? And I'm like, I want you to passionately read all this stuff I say. And like, if something like I say, like, get something going, just riff off of it. And, and I go, I don't give a sh You could say the most racist shit, like, go, like a, a, if you want to attack me. And so we have, you know, I gave him permit. He's like, he's like, is that what you want? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, this fucking gooky, chink-eyed, buck tooth, ching chong, like, like he just went into the character and I'm just on the floor dying. It's like, it was like an honor and a privilege. And he's, and you know, he's like, is that too much? I'm like, no, 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 do more <laughs> of that. You know? And, and I'm like, so he's just going off and he's like, who the fuck, you know, like total, like who the fuck talks for 12 hours and then hires me Roddy Piper to come fucking talk. Like you think your words are that special that you need us fucking, so, you know, and he's just going in on me and I'm like, and I, like my feelings are starting to get hurt, and I'm like, "You're too good. You're too good," you know. And he and he does this thing, and I, and then like he's just in my warehouse, and then I go, "Can you cut promos for like all my gear?" And he's like, "Look at this fucking T-shirt that this shitty artist made. You think anyone would fucking buy this?" You know. So and then he holds my Monko character. He's like, "Look at this stupid fucking whale. Anyone could draw this. Look at this. Oh, oh, look at this buck tooth." And I'm like, "We need to have him do everything." And a week later, he died. Mm. You know. And I was just like, holy shit. Like, I was so sad. But once again, kind of like the Frank Miller thing. Like, you have an image and an idea and a fantasy of what it's going to be like. And then it, like, far surpasses, like, what you could ever imagine. So that's my Roddy Piper story. And, like, rest in peace. Like, that guy, the GOAT, the best, you know. No doubt, man. Let's let's cut this recording. Let's set things up, man, and, and uh, talk comics. Is, is there anything coming up that you want to promote before we get out of here? Uh, no. <laughs> there it is, man. <laughs> Dave, thank you so much. A lot of great stories there. Um, I really appreciate hearing kind of your emotional reflection on that weekend, you know, because I, I feel like that's something I can relate to that. I have those moments where it's like, that was unbelievable. I've met several of my heroes. Um, it's yeah. really great to hear you articulate that. And, uh, and the same with the Roddy Piper story, you know, it, it kind of fits into that, I think, pretty well, too. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you guys for giving me a platform to say it, you know.
I think the right people, I think this is the right audience for that story, you know? Definitely. Joe, uh, Joe, Joe Rogan wouldn't know what to do with that. Yeah. <laughs>